Good morning, good afternoon, and good mean, uh, good after, good evening, rather, for um, wherever you are in the world. My name is Christina Coolius. I am the Senior Manager of Anti-Corruption and Global Governance here at the UN Global Compact. I'm delighted to welcome you all to today's webinar, 2020 Vision, Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions. I'm here with my co-moderator, Ulysses Smith, CEO and President of TELOS Governance Advisors, who also happens to be our 2016 SDG pioneer for Goal 16. We are also joined by some wonderful panelists from business and civil society who will be joining you a later, bit later in the webinar. Thank you to all of you for joining us. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly take you through the agenda and logistics for the webinar. So we will start with the introduction where I'll do a little bit of theme setting why this webinar, why this topic, and why now. Then we'll move into the first panel, The Spirit of Goal 16, where Ulysses will provide some background to Goal 16 and also um, invite our first set of panelists to share their views. Then we'll move into the 2020 vision, which is where I'll provide an overview of the vision for the action platform, including what engagement looks like at the global and local level. Then Ulysses will invite our second panelist uh, to share their um, views on the practical significance of the action platform. Then we'll turn over to you. Hopefully you'll have some questions for our panelists. So we'll welcome you to send those questions in advance for discussion as time permits. Then I'll ask our final speaker to make some remarks looking back on the discussion and then looking ahead to the launch of the action platform and beyond and I'll close with a couple of announcements. In terms of logistics, again, welcome you to, to ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, you can see by the questions pane indicated by the letter A, which is where you can answer your question, please specify to whom you'd like the question to be directed. And of course, if you're having any technical difficulties, please raise your hand as indicated by the letter B. So let's get started. So the purpose of the webinar is to explore the vision, milestones and impact of the Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions, which is to be launched during this year's UN Private Sector Forum on the margins of the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly at UN Headquarters in New York on Monday the 24th of September. This webinar will include an overview of the efforts to date and efforts necessary to achieve the Action Platform's objectives, outputs and outcomes. Ultimately, we hope it serves as a call to action for businesses, governments, civil society and others to join the action platform and contribute to steering its course over the next two to three years, that is the 2020 vision. I hope you'll indulge me as I try to set the scene by allowing me to pose a question to all of you. When was the last time you heard or read one of the following headlines in the news? and I'll read them out for effect. But rampant bribery, corruption and illicit financial flows, rising civil unrest and violent conflict, undermining of democracy and the rule of law, threats to fundamental freedoms, including decent work, privacy and self-determination, attacks on freedom of expression and journalistic integrity, including deaths of activists and journalists and the overall lack of trust in corporations, institutions and politicians. Notably, we're, we're seeing the headlines in, in an increasing number of countries, irrespective of their economic, political or social standing. And it's for this reason that we suggest that this appears to be no time like the present for everyone, governments, businesses, civil society alike, to find common ground and commonality as a force for good in addressing these issues. And interestingly, most, if not all of these issues are captured in goal 16 of the Sustainable Development Goals to promote peace, justice and strong institutions. I now invite Ulysses to provide a bit more background on the spirit of goal 16 and also to uh, moderate our first panel. Thanks very much, Christina. Uh, and hello to everyone joining us on the webinar. It's a real pleasure to be here with you all talking about uh, this very exciting action platform on goal 16 
uh, a very uh, unique and interesting and exciting forum for uh, broad-based engagement on uh, Goal 16 between government, private sector, and civil society. We will come on to uh, a great set of panelists shortly, um, representing each of those stakeholder groups. Um, but before we do, just to give a little bit of uh, context for today's discussion, uh, kind of an SDG 101 for those of you who are less familiar with the SDGs. Um, in 2015, September, uh, with the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, all 193 member states of the United Nations made a commitment over the next 15 years to working towards the creation of a world we all want, known as the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Goal 16 of the SDGs focuses on promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, the provision of justice for all, and building effective, accountable institutions at all levels. It is clear that Goal 16 is among the most ambitious and broad-ranging of the 17 SDGs. It seeks to address challenges ranging from a more procedural variety, including effective, effective, accountable, and transparent public institutions and the promotion of the rule of law, to more substantive objectives, including corruption, organized crime, and discrimination, and the protection of fundamental freedoms. That said, it cannot be overstated that achieving Goal 16 is essential to fostering responsible and sustainable business, building inclusive and stable societies, and achieving the SDGs more broadly. As many of you may know, Goal 16 was one of the most contested and politically sensitive of the SDGs during the process to get to them. It is for this reason that the UN Global Compact, in consultation with businesses, governments, and civil society, is seeking to adopt a holistic approach to how Goal 16 relates to both governments and businesses. While this may seem unconventional given the particular themes under SDG 16, that they are inherently the duty of government, much like the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, there is also an inherent responsibility of businesses to do no harm with respect to culture, strategies, operations, and relationships, what we might think of as corporate governance. And at the same time, responsible businesses are encouraged to make a positive contribution through, among other things, public policy dialogue and public-private partnerships, what we might think of as global governance. With this context, I would like to now turn to our panelists. I'm very happy to introduce you to uh, Joby Makinwa, who is the Global Compact's Chief of Intergovernmental Relations in Africa, who will help us think a bit more about uh, why, uh, from a government perspective, business should be involved in working on Goal 16 in a bigger way. We'll also hear from Sarah fentoli Fromelt, Public Policy and Global Regulations Manager at Nestle, to provide the business perspective. And then we'll hear from Katya Bechtel, the head of business integrity at Transparency International, who will give TI's view on why business should take a proactive role on fighting corruption as an element in progressing Goal 16 and the SDGs more generally. So I think my basic question to each of you, please, and we'll start with you, Joby, if that's okay, is from your perspective, why do you think it's important for businesses to engage on Goal 16 of the SDGs in order to achieve peace, justice, and strong institutions in a big and robust way. Thank Great. you, Jody. Uh, thank you very much, Ulysses and um, Christina. Um, governments are interested in uh, the private sector doing business in a responsible manner uh, because uh, companies operate in a society. And um, it is, while it is the primary duty of government to ensure that uh, the Sustainable Development Goals are implemented and being able to lift people out of poverty, which the SDGs are, uh, Agenda 2030 is about, however, the private sector also has a role to play uh, in ensuring that uh, the rule of law prevails and ensuring that they are not involved in corruption, in illicit financial flows, uh, in so many other things, as uh, Christina has already said this morning, and also that there is a lack of trust in government and in corporations in order to ensure that the trust is uh, uh, brought back in terms of respect for corporations and for government is important for companies 
uh, to also um, do business in a sustainable manner. So what I'm saying therefore is that there's a role for business to play in solving societal and, and environmental challenges. Uh, the SDGs therefore provide a platform for government and business to join efforts to address the challenges of our time and to ensure that no one is left behind. Business needs to transform the way the uh, business is done and governments need to transform governance. Uh, working collectively, we enhance the attractiveness of a country to the private sector in terms of government, especially in developing countries, uh, ensuring that uh, there are accountable inst institutions, I mean, strong institutions, for example, will translate theories to practice and dreams to reality. So the uh, importance of strong and transparent institutions can be founded on integrity, transparency, independence, and efficiency. This will lead to trust by the private sector in the government and trust of the people who rely on them and trust of the private sector. So we need to bring trust back to government, trust back to companies, uh, and the private, uh, the Blue 16 and the SDGs actually provide a platform where we can all work together to ensure that uh, uh, people are, the poor people, especially in developing countries, are lifted out of poverty and the SDGs uh, fully realized. Thank you, Joby. Sarah, uh, given the the values and, and objectives that, that underlie Goal 16, rule of law, the fight against corruption, strong institutions, judicial independence, in many respects, one can think of Goal 16 as uh, a goal that, that really has particular relevance for the business community, and that all those factors relate to going into uh, a strong environment for, for business sustainability and business success. So would you spend a little time telling us from your perspective, from Nestle's perspective, why you feel that it's in business's strong interest to engage on Goal 16? Um, sure, Ulysses, and um, thank you very much to Christina and you for inviting me to this webinar. And thank you to everybody who dialed in to listen to this important topic. So my name is Sarah fantilli Frommelt, and I work for Nestle in the legal department, in a department entitled Legal and Sustainability and Creating Shared Values. And I'm very happy to present to you today the business perspective on why we think it is crucial for businesses to engage in SDG 16. So to dive straight into the topic, I would like to share three ideas on the why. So first, the business case for private sector engagement in peace, justice, and strong institutions is that these are core to sustainable business. They are the foundation not only for business responsibilities, but also business success. SDG 16 includes a number of factors that directly stable business environment and contribute to peaceful and inclusive societies. For companies, an operating environment which is governed by strong corporate governance and the rule of law provides the basis for commercial certainty and creates the foundation for long-term investment and growth and sustainable development in which all people can flourish. And second, so we're very happy to see that nowadays around the world, businesses, be they small or big, global or local, are increasingly recognizing the interdependence of commercial success and sustainable development. And investors are increasingly demanding that businesses align these two objectives. So this is another reason why businesses should engage in this goal. And third, with the adoption of SDGs, there is a growing recognition that businesses can play a vitally important role in advancing good governance and SDG 16, serving as a complement to and not a substitute for government action. So as Joby said, we need to collaborate. And this is a very important point I want to make. It is crucial that businesses collaborate with governments, UN institutions and civil society on this matter. Only through the collaboration of these parties can we achieve the SDG 16 objectives sustainably. 
And goal 16 in itself builds the basis to have these conversations with various stakeholders and to be a credible and responsible partner. So as you know, and as Christina mentioned, this goal is very broad and complex, but getting this right will serve as an enabler or a catalyst to all other SDGs. So for all these reasons, and I only mentioned a few, businesses should engage in this topic. Now, Ulysses, let me come to the point of speaking about Nestle's approach on this. So Nestle, and especially the legal department for which I'm speaking for, has been very passionate about this matter. We saw that lawyers and compliance officers can play a key role in promoting the rule of law and business integrity overall. But doing so in a silo would definitely not be enough. So the legal functions in general need to breach out beyond their departments and across all management levels up to the board to make the SDG 16 part of the corporate DNA. Only then can we ensure a strong corporate governance. We are not only active within the company, but at Nestle, we also try to create awareness through various external activities and engage to advance the cause. And we believe that to have the greatest impact, the UNGC is the right partner to do so. There is no other space that builds these strong connections between all stakeholders, so the government, the UN, civil society and businesses at a national and international level and which use a principle-based approach. So this is why also we chose to be patron for the Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institution. So therefore, and to conclude, so I can only encourage my fellow colleagues from businesses to join this cause and the Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions. In the current reality, this topic is so important that we cannot remain passive. But as I said, and as Joby said, this needs to happen in collaboration with governments and other partners. So hence, and if I may allow myself, it's a call to action for everybody today. Sarah, thank you so much. That was an incredibly rich perspective, I think, from the business side and reflecting both the internal and external um, ways in which uh, businesses can be engaging on on uh, the the issues underlying Goal 16, and for 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 also you know talking about the action platform as a as a unique forum for that that engagement. Um, Katia, we'd like to come to you now uh, to present a perspective from Transparency International on uh, civil society's views regarding broader business engagement and sort of the opportunities for business from both a corruption and broader Goal 16 perspective. Over to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Christina. Thank you very much, uh, Ulysses, for inviting TI to make some remarks on this on this goal 16. And also thank you very much for the hard work you have already put into this, uh, which has brought us actually to this webinar today and to the launch of the action platform on goal 16 in a couple of weeks. Um, as many of you know, TI has been engaging with UN Global Compact for many years, particularly on Principle 10, but also as a member of the board. And we are very happy and ex excited to now support the action platform on Goal 16 as a partner. But let me come to the actual question. Why is Goal 16 so important for business? And my uh, co-panelists have already put it like very eloquently, so I think I don't have too much to add. But to give a very short answer, it's important to business because without a major and blunt contribution of the business community, Goal 16 will not be achieved. From TI's perspective, Goal 16 is the key goal because it addresses corruption and bribery, which is an issue which cuts across all other SDGs. So, as was mentioned before, we strongly believe that tackling corruption, bribery, but in the same way to build strong institutions, the rule of law, is a prerequisite for achieving all other SDGs. Business in particular, and particular those businesses who are acting globally, understand very well and maybe better than many others um, about the possible effects of corruption on business, but not only on the bottom lines of companies, but also uh, on society at large. 
businesses have seen firsthand that uh, corruption erodes trust in public and private institution. Corruption creates uh, inefficiencies. We have seen it many, many times in procurement processes. And not least, it now threatens democracy, which is one of the key challenges of our days. So engaging in Goal 16 provides an opportunity to create an awareness about the links um, between corruption, justice, strong institutions, human, human rights and peace, and how business, governments and civil society can act collectively to address them. I believe that the story about Go 16 has not yet been properly told from a business perspective, and I think that's something we can achieve with working on this action platform. Go 16 has also not yet received the attention it should, and um, as I think Sarah also said, um, when we work on this, like creating a attention about uh, for Goal 16, this goal can become a very powerful driver for the whole SDG framework. But we need the expertise, we need the experience of business to unpack this goal, to make it actionable and to make it concrete and to create awareness about its key function in the SDG framework. With the review process of Goal 16 coming up in 2019, we have a unique opportunity to create visibility for Goal 16 and to also, um, as the business community, contribute to the review process. TI is already um, engaged in the review processes. In fact, uh, we are producing uh, shadow reports to the official UN reports, which provides a bit of a broader perspective, specifically on corruption. And I think one of the things uh, I would be happy to do um, in the upcoming discussions is to see how business can become more involved in these and in other processes. So, I close here and in this spirit, I look very much forward to working with you over the next two to three years, I guess, and I hope that many, many more who are now on the call uh, will join us. Thank you. Thank you, Katia. That was, that was terrific and very helpful. Um, thanks to each of you uh, for these terrific insights um, and perspectives uh, from, from, from both from business, government, and uh, from civil society. Um, I'll now turn back over to Christina to provide an overview of the 2020 vision for the action platform for peace, justice, and strong institutions. But I would like to encourage people, uh, if you have questions, to go ahead and uh, submit those to us. We will have some time for a Q&A a bit later in the webinar, and uh, we would love to, to hear from you and to provide any uh, answers to specific questions you might have. Over to you, Christina. Fantastic. Thanks, Ulysses, and, and thanks for reminding everyone to um, submit their questions if, if um, they have any. Um, I just like to say thank you to our first panel. Um, I think you provided such a great foundation for the overview of the action platform um, and really does get to the heart of what it means through the lens of, of government, business and civil society for us to all come together. So thank you so much for those remarks. So um, what I'd uh, like to start to, to do first is just to explain what we know so far. Um, so the action platform has been in concept phase since the 1st of October 2017 and during that time we've had the privilege of speaking to around 50 representatives from businesses, governments and civil society through bilateral calls and in-person workshops to really elicit the views around the feasibility of action platform on peace, justice and strong institutions. And throughout that process it's been really clear um, and we've received a reinforcing message, if you will, that there's a need for an action platform of this nature, particularly in raising awareness with respect to the importance of businesses and governments engaging on Goal 16 and the unique value of the UN Global Compact in facilitating that process. So while the finer details with respect to the action platform's objectives, outputs and outcomes, including the countries in which we will be engaging, will be determined following the launch of the action platform, one idea that's been firmly agreed upon is the development of a framework for how businesses can act individually and collectively with civil society, with governments, to advance Goal 16. And one of the main products of the action platform will be the Understand, Implement, Report framework, which seeks to demonstrate how businesses can play a crucial role in advancing Goal 16 
and taking this bifurcated lens that I know Ulysses and others have touched upon, which is looking at it through the lens of corporate governance and looking at it through the lens of global governance. Um, and how that um, holistically, as you can see through this, this diagram, that ultimately there's this, um, this ecosystem and this symbiotic relationship that can occur between businesses and governments in advancing peace, justice and strong institutions. And again, emphasising the importance of the global context and also the local context. So making sure that um, there's a bit of a bottom up and also a top down approach to developing this framework. And looking at the elements in turn, you know, first and foremost is the understanding element. So how can we translate Goal 16 into language that businesses can understand? And as Ulysses mentioned before, not just in the context of, of corporate governance as we know it with board oversight, but also looking at the culture, the strategies, the policies, the processes and the relationships. But then also as business looks externally, as Sarah mentioned, um, how can they partner with others in a strategic and in a concrete way, um, particularly with governments and civil society, to be able to um, strengthen public institutions, laws and systems. And so once we have that understanding, we can think about how we implement as well, identifying how business can embed Goal 16 within and without, externally that is. Um, so really important to emphasise how, through the lens of corporate governance, can companies get their own house in order by integrating and operationalising um, Goal 16 throughout those elements already foreshadowed. And then again, looking externally, how can one engage collectively um, through public policy dialogue and public-private partnerships to be able to, to strengthen those external elements as well. And again, emphasising, as Sarah rightly pointed out, taking a principles-based approach in doing so. And then finally looking at reporting. Um, as we know, what measures, what gets measured gets done. So measuring the impact through qualitative and quantitative key performance indicators. So as most of you will know, in terms of the corporate governance, companies, businesses, large and small, are already reporting on their corporate sustainability reporting. So we wouldn't want to create something new, but rather leverage what is already taking place. It's just that we want to be able to identify concrete metrics for business on Goal 16 and incorporate those in current reporting measures, including um, businesses reporting on the SDGs, as many of you know, we also have a, a project in that regard. But in addition to that, perhaps also helping support governments to fulfil their own reporting requirements and identifying opportunities to strengthen the enabling environment. And one project that I don't want to steal Lucy's thunder is the Global Alliance for Reporting on Progress for Peaceful, Just and Inclusive Societies that the Global Compact is also proud to be part of. <laughs> So the essence really is to identify um, you know, gaps, but also strengths in the enabling environment, i.e. Goal 16. But by doing so, we're creating greater understanding. That way we can also identify um, opportunities for implementation and of course, reporting impact. So again, it really emphasizes the dynamic of that ecosystem. So in terms of the conversations that we had, another uh, key issue that, um, or theme rather, that um, we were kind of encouraged to look at is the thought leadership aspect. So a lot of themes came up throughout our discussions that we tried to bucket um, into these categories of anti-corruption, human rights, rule of law and strategic. But in essence, um, there, you know, as you can see, there are quite a number there. Um, but, for example, looking at the emerging themes around beneficial ownership and illicit financial flows, or looking at the protection of environmental and human rights defenders, and taking these issues, and as you can imagine, they're, they're quite substantive in and of themselves, but trying to provide a, a forum where we can have constructive dialogue with, again, the key tripartite um, actors of business, governments and civil society to try and see where we can um, explore some of the issues and also perhaps the solutions to address them in a collective way. And so we really hope that we're able to provide the forum for that as well. Um, so 
Uh, one thing I will say is that, you know, the action platform doesn't aspire, nor does it purport to be the panacea for achieving each of the targets under Goal 16. But rather what we hope to achieve is building trust, which is of course mentioned um, throughout this discussion thus far, and common ground between businesses, civil society and government. Encouraging the engagement in constructive dialogue, identifying priorities and partnerships, and of course measuring um, impact of those of those activities. Being able to create interlinkages between Goal 16 and core issues affecting business, and ultimately demonstrating the relevance of Goal 16 on the corporate DNA, as, as Sarah mentioned previously. But also promoting, as I mentioned before, this bottom-up and top-down approach to the framework and the global theme. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's really critical for us to be able to get the country context, but also to, of course, be able to lift that up to the global context so that we really can start to see a holistic view of Goal 16 um, at the international and the national level. And of course, we would um, we have the, the privilege of engaging with our wonderful global compact local networks around the world um, to be able to facilitate that process. And also to provide an opportunity to learn, engage and commit by businesses, by civil society and governments at the global and local level. But also let's think about the fact that the journey is just as important as the destination. And as Katja rightly pointed out, Goal 16 um, really uh, is, uh, I think it's a challenge for all of us to be able to amplify the importance of Goal 16. And I really think the journey is as important as the destination in doing so. So I hope this provides a helpful glimpse into what the Action Platform seeks to achieve. Um, I'll now turn back to you, Lissy, to moderate our discussion with our second set of wonderful speakers to share their thoughts. Thanks, you, Lissy. Thanks, Christina. So with the second panel, uh, we really want to focus on the question um, that, based on what we've been hearing from Christina uh, about the 2020 vision, uh, how do we see the action platform for peace, justice, and strong institutions making an impact at the global and or the local level? Uh, very happily, we have two wonderful speakers. We have Ayatollah Jagun, the Chief Operating Officer and Company Secretary at Owando PLC in Nigeria to provide her perspective from the business side. And we have Lucy Turner, the coordinator of the Global Alliance for Reporting Progress on Peaceful, Just, and Inclusive Societies at uh, the UN Development Program. So Ayatollah, if you would please kick us off with this part of the discussion with pre presenting your perspective from, uh, from Owando's point of view. Thank you very much, Ulysses, and thank you, Christina, as well, for involving me in this webinar. Um, I, we're always excited about um, our involvement with the United Nations Global Compact and really look forward to being able to continue that involvement through the Action Platform for Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. Um, so why, first of all, um, the Action Platform, why did we get involved? I think um, we looked at um, a number of action platforms when we were um, deciding um, which one to align ourselves with. And we came to the decision that the Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions was really the best action platform that we could as an indigenous oil and gas company with a bit of a global footprint um, was the what was the key um, action platform that could help us to achieve our goals and our values. Um, from, from, from a, a values point of view, we felt that it was aligned with our corporate values and with our corporate vision. And we also felt that it was fundamental to being able to achieve our corporate objectives. Um, why, again, because we believe the Action Platform for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions is fundamental um, in a developing world, world con um, and, and a global context to the achievement of all the SDG goals. I mean, we do have the goals that we prioritize um, um, as far as our, our sustainability initiatives are concerned um, on uh, SDG 4, quality education, gender equality, um, and affordable and clean energy. But we 
know that there is such an interaction between all the goals, um, we felt that this was the, the, the action platform that enabled us to have the widest reach and also the greatest impact. Um, so in terms of um, um, another reason why we got involved, I mean, personally, you know, I, I believe that um, we can be that great generation. We've seen the Millennium Development Goals come and go, and we have the SDGs. And I, I feel that with a number of those SDGs, we don't have a choice. We can't, we can't do a, a hit and miss anymore. We have to. We've seen, certainly within the context of Nigeria, that we have to be able to make quite a bit of mileage in um, meeting some of these goals to be able to have um, a country. So um, there's, some, there's a quote by Nelson Mandela, which I absolutely love. It says, overcoming poverty is not a task of charity, it is an act of justice. And you know, I really believe that a lot of the goals that speak to zero poverty, zero hunger, Quite a lot of the um, the initial um, goals, um, I think from goal one to goal six, all the way to um, even goal seven, are all about addressing issues of social justice. And we have seen in Nigeria that failure to address issues of social justice issues, whether it's in the Niger Delta where we operate, or it's in the northeastern part of Nigeria, creates conflict and instability. And um, and, and, and a lot of destruction and disability, not just in terms of the country, but to businesses operating in those areas as well. So it becomes incredibly important that we, um, we look at the 2020 vision and we see whether it's with regards to um, responsible lobbying, whether it's regard in, with regards to, um, and again, partnering with government and with civil society to see how we can work together to address some of these issues in a sustainable way. Um, even the events of the, in, in the Niger Delta that I re referred to, um, the events of militancy in the Niger Delta were, were only resolved um, when the previous administration brokered an amnesty deal with the local community, which encompassed um, and entailed addressing issues to do with education, climate action, responsible consumption and production, addressing issues to do with life below the water, um, decent work and economic growth. So it's only by addressing issues of social justice and creating peaceful communities that we believe that sustainable cities and communities can be built and that businesses can operate sustainably in their, in their respect, just locally as well as internationally. Um, so we are also excited about being able to uh, mobilize other businesses locally um, through the local network, um, the Global Compact um, Network in Nigeria. Um, we, um, Owando sits on the, on the board of the local network. And um, really our goal is not just, um, is being able to collaborate to ensure that we have maximum um, impact. Um, collaborating not just, um, coming together not just as businesses, but collaborating with government and with civil society to ensure that the initiatives that we drive are those that can foster peace, can foster, uh, uh, ensure that we have um, social justice and can strengthen our institutions within Nigeria as well as our, our, um, strengthen, um, strengthen, strengthen our um, institutions, our own institutions as well as our institutions, government agencies and MDAs within Nigeria as well. Um, so I just wanted to end by, um, I have a slide that speaks to some of the things that we are doing as, as, a, as a company, just to give some examples uh, and break it down to say, okay, this is how businesses can make um, an impact. So we've, we've got a foundation called the Orlando Foundation and also through our community um, relations team, our community development team, we have some initiatives in the Northeast of Nigeria. We also have initiatives in the Niger Delta, um, but I just want to focus on our Northeast initiative. Um, the low levels of education and, and low levels of literacy in, in Northeast Nigeria, like, um, like, as a, like they have been, um, have been exacerbated by the Boko Haram insurgency. Some people would even say that they swelled the Boko Haram insurgency as well. 
um, we found that again, government security forces have done and still are using schools in the Northeast as military bases, and that reduces children's access to formal education. Um, again, most of the public schools, through a systemic um, lack of investment, again, talking about strong institutions, lack the essential infrastructure to enable them to function as safe, efficient, and effective schools. And in this situation, parents choose not to send their children to school if they feel that it is not a safe environment for them, particularly because of the um, incidents of kidnappings um, that have occurred in, um, in Chibok and in other parts of the Northeast as well. So, of course, these circumstances pose um, far-reaching implications for achieving the Sustainable Development Goals 4, 5, and 16, which speak to quality education, gender equality, and peace, justice, and strong institutions. And what we have done is, um, and have done for a while, because we're committed to building strong institutions, is to focus on providing quality education and safer learning environments for children in the Northeast. We've got quite a bit of work that we do in the IDP camps, um, where we are trying to mainstream um, the children back into, uh, or, or move the children back into mainstream education, um, providing them with, we do a lot of work in terms of infrastructure, building of schools. Um, unfortunately, I think the slide I had, I wasn't able to send the slide uh, that shows a picture of the students learning on the, on the trees. Um, classrooms were basically on the trees and um, we've been able to build concrete um, school blocks where they can actually learn in classrooms with interactive whiteboards. We also do quite a lot of work when it comes to teacher training um, and sensitization to enable the teachers to teach, bearing in mind that they are teaching um, students who have experienced conflict. Um, and to, 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 to yeah, so we, so we do that as well. Um, we, we are driven by our dedication to combat gender inequality by focusing on the girl child, and we partner with DFID and so many other global and local institutions to um, create that safer learning environment uh, that enables parents to send their girl child to school um, and, and, and therefore help to address that gender-based discrimination. So, so far in the Northeast, we've adopted 10 schools in Adamawa and Bauchi. They've received infrastructure upgrades. We've also provided clean water and sanitation um, in those schools as well. Um, we provide conducive and safe learning environments for, um, we've been able to, in, those, in three states, Adamawa, Bauchi, and Taraba, provide conducive and safe learning spaces for over 13,000 children. We've seen um, a 17% cumulative average increase in annual enrollment, a reduction in truancy and uh, teacher redeployment. Uh, in doing this, we've also been able to partner with other businesses. We've partnered quite extensively with Sumitomo in also building some um, ICT labs in those schools and also making sure that the teachers are effectively trained to deliver I, um, ICT training. Uh, so it's much more than just the rudiments, it's also going beyond to make sure we're preparing those students for, um, for, 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 for 21st century. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ayatollah, and thank you for uh, such a rich picture um, of all the things that, that Owando is doing and for really illustrating the interconnectedness, the goal, you know, the goal 16 plus concept, the goal 16 really does inter interrelate with so many of the other um, objectives uh, of the of the SDGs. Um, I'd like to now turn it over to Lucy um, to provide her perspective on the role that the action platform will, can play um, in advancing progress with Goal 16. Lucy, please. Thank you, Lucy. Well, as uh, Christina mentioned, the Global Compact is a new member of the Secretariat of the Global Alliance, which helps member states which means to say government, to achieve measurable progress on SD16. Now, the reporting process of the 2030 Agenda, so of the entire SDG framework, is an innovation in the international system. It's an accountability mechanism that we didn't have during the MD era. So it requires that various parts of government, civil society, businesses, and UN entities, and INGOs, 
everyone comes together to jointly set objectives, monitor and report progress towards the goals. And that matters because as we know, as has been said, we can't achieve peace, justice and strong institutions that underpin progress on the goals without business. So the action platform through the Global Alliance helps to leverage that reporting process of the 2030 agenda as a concrete mechanism to create new kinds of relationships between business, government, civil society at global level and crucially at national level. Um, so it's a concrete mechanism to realize greater cooperation between all these actors. That reporting process also helps to create and improve evidence base for action to achieve peace, justice and strong institutions. And as we've been speaking, we actually had a question, where, you know, what do you foresee the main obstacles for SDG uh, 16 implementation? And one of the key challenges we have is lack of data. Especially in the case of SDG 16, governments often don't have the data and the technology needed to achieve SDG 16. Um, so we don't know, for example, how to ensure that police patrols are conducted in the most dangerous areas, how to identify human traffickers, illicit arms flows, corruption. Business has a lot of this data, as well as technology like predictive analytics, blockchain, data visualization analysis tools, the high performance supercomputers, super which could identify where money is held and how it flows. If we don't have this particular contribution from business, we cannot have evidence based policy and action, which means to say the international system cannot be effective in implementing SDG 16. And business, by making this uh, kind of contribution, can uh, make a, a, a particularly important contribution to achieving SDG 16 that goes far beyond, frankly, in many cases, what could be achieved through philanthropic contributions or through the core um, a product or service offer. Um, and we're finding that businesses often don't know that they're sat, they're sat on a lot of information that we need to address some of the biggest challenges of our time. And members of the action platform have an opportunity to change this. Um, so for business, clearly it matters that they're able to know, as Christine has talked about and other speakers have talked about, there's a need to educate business um, on exactly how they can con contribute, what they can do to promote achievement of SG16. And the action platform provides a means by which they can become more informed to learn from each other, to make a more effective contribution to achieving SDG 16. Oanda um, also uh, mentioned this, you know, that by engaging with governments at national level, um, the global compact local networks, which are part of the action platform, enable them to um, ensure that their engagements are the right ones, that business contributions are the right ones. Again, that the contribution of business is evidence-based because it's based on an awareness that came through a national planning monitoring reporting process of what the challenges are, what the opportunities are, and crucially, what the unmet needs are. And what we know is that every unmet need is an opportunity for profit. So these are opportunities. The reporting process creates an opportunity for people to come together to discuss what they need, and business gets really good market information to inform its operations. Um, so, a final thing, because I realize aspects of data and, and reporting and offer doesn't sound um, intuitively obvious why that matters. Now, in terms of sustainability reporting, corporate reporting, by making this kind of contribution to frankly strengthening the international system, business also gets better information for its shareholders, for its board members, for its clients, for its customers, for its staff, for its would-be recruits, for investors about how it's contributing to change lives and societies. It's certainly interesting for all of us in UN organizations and in international organizations and in businesses to say, you know, in the case of a law firm, for example, that we provided um, training on um, judgment writing or that we strengthened the case management in the system in this country or that country or that we provided a workshop on various aspects of international human rights law. 
But the kind of information we really care about is how have overall levels of impunity for those particular types of crimes changed? How have overall levels of trust in institutions, access to justice, how has that changed? And until and unless we build the systems that enable us to ascertain the overall macro level, outcome level impact of our collective uh, contribution, then we're not going to get that kind of information. So the action platform matters because it, uh, it provides concrete ways um, for business to, to, in, to know how to contribute and um, a means by which it can help to provide us with the information we need to strengthen the entire international system to achieve SDG 16. Terrific. Thank you, Lucy. That was really, really helpful. Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Christina now. Uh, as we see that there have been a handful more questions come in, so I think we'll maybe turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. And again, what a rich panel. Um, thank you so much for your contributions, Ayatollah and Lucy. Um, we have had a couple of questions come in, um, and I'll just I'll, I'll read uh, a couple of them, and I think that's probably what we'll have uh, time for. I know that one has already been addressed by Lucy about the main obstacle for Goal 16, and I think um, absolutely information is key. Um, the other two questions, um, to sort of paraphrase, uh, that um, a really interesting point that's raised is that Goal 16 will be reviewed for the first time at next year's high-level political forum. So how will um, the UN Global Compact, ostensibly through the action platform, engage and contribute to this review? So that's the first question. And then the second question is this, the issue of informal human beings, which I assume means without legal identity. Um, particularly in the Africa region, uh, will the Global Compact launch any actions, activities or partnerships to help address this? Um, if, if I may, I might start answering those questions and I'd love to open it to the panel if they have any remarks. I think we have around, um, around five minutes, if, if that's okay. Um, so ever so succinctly, um, absolutely, we're, um, we are very much looking forward to the, the notion that Goal 16 will be uh, reviewed at the HLPF, uh, which is why I think the timing of this action platform being launched when it is, is so crucial. Um, we are working with our UN brothers and sisters, such as Lucy and others, to make sure that we lend businesses voice to the discussions that are underway. Um, there is the Stand Up for SDG 16, which is a, a coalition of UN-led initiatives that are working towards um, the lead up to the HLPF next year. And so we will hope to be playing a key part in that process. But of course, we would like to engage those uh, businesses and governments and civil society organisations that become part of the action platform to lend their voices to that effort. And then a quick response to the, uh, the second question. To, to be fair and to be honest, I think this has to be, again, occur at the grassroots. What we hope to achieve as an example is that we would um, be able to host uh, workshops within particular countries across Africa um, that, that show an interest. Of course, we would ideally be in a place where governments and businesses and civil society in a particular country want to come to the table and have a conversation. Um, I suspect that um, you know legal identity would come up as a as one issue of many that are important to business and governments to address. So I would I'd humbly defer to the bottom up approach when we look at um, addressing that particular issue. But I'd like to open it up to any others who may want to speak about that. Yeah, um, thanks, uh, Christina. Yeah, I 100% I agree with what you just said, Christina. I mean, there is certainly a place for conversations here in New York, in cities throughout the world, talking about how it's really important for business to engage in helping to achieve SDG 16. But I think what's different about the action platform and um, what's different about this time now is that we are ready to move from one level of engagement and one type of conversation to another, which is that where the rubber hits the road at national level, what are we doing that's different? What are we doing to concretely engage business with communities, their civil society supporters and, and government institutions? to actually uh, implement these things. So 42 countries have signed up to report to the High Level Political Forum, and there will be two next year, one's in July and one's in September. 
And in the lead up to that, those 42 countries will be conducting what's called a voluntary national review. And that's when all these conversations happen. So Christina spoke about how there's a need and opportunity for public-private dialogue. So this voluntary national review, review process is a means of having that dialogue. It's a space where all the people who matter, which means to say business, which means to say everyone who cares about these things, come together to jointly identify what it is they want to, how, how they've achieved progress against um, the targets and indicators included in SDG 16, and also other objectives linked to peace, justice, and inclusion, which they sent to themselves, set themselves. So what we uh, will be doing over the next year is continuing to engage with countries that are reporting, those 42 and others who want to set up systems to be able to deliver better reports in coming years, to connect them with local um, uh, businesses in the uh, local networks who are interested in being engaged, INGO, civil society, UN government, um, to help them to do the job of reporting on something for which there's often very little data to which national statistics others and others responsible for reporting um, have access. Lovely. Thank you, Lucy. Um, I think just for time, being mindful of time, um, again, thanks for the questions. Thanks for the amazing discussions that have happened to date. Um, I'd love to now turn to our final speaker, Kevin Kuhn, Global um, Chair of the Global Policy Committee and Managing Partner of the International Human Rights and Labor Rights Employment Law at Baker McKenzie. Um, quite the responsibility mouthful. Kevin, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, my question to you is this. Based on what you've heard during the discussion thus far, can you please share what, why you think it's important for um, governments, UN Global Compact business participants, some of whom are Baker McKenzie clients, and civil society organisations to join the action platform? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Christina, thank you uh, very much for that kind of uh, introduction, and thank you, uh, thank you, Lissies, and all the panel members and participants this morning. Uh, and, and let me answer the question this way: and when you con consider uh, this, the SDGs, and particularly Goal 16, while it was controversial at its inception, it is one of the most uh, ambitious and wide-ranging of the SDGs, and includes. Um, uh, issues of effective, accountable, transparent public institutions, protection of fundamental freedoms, and uh, in particular, the rule of law. And just to provide some, some broader context to and supplement some of the comments from the panelists, a reminder that in 2016, uh, the former Secretary General of the UN stated that the rule of law as a key pillar, as a key pillar to achieving all of the SDGs. And so it's, it's for that reason that you know, we see SDG as a SDG 16 as a key enabler for the other SDGs. And so for business, while the SDGs are focused on government, at the core, uh, they are fundamental principles that are essential to fostering responsible and sustainable business. And therefore, uh, given those objectives, uh, business must play a role. Um, you stated early on in the uh, panel that um, it's recognized that the challenges and, and solutions are increasingly complex, and you cited issues of corruption, civil unrest, protection of fundamental freedoms, including freedom of expression, uh, trust in corporations and institutions. And so, you know, for business um, and all institutions, quite frankly, uh, now more than ever, given those complexities, it is really necessary to have collaboration between government, civil society, and business to really find answers to those complex solutions, um, um, our complex problems in a complex world. And so, you know, when I reflect on, you know, for Baker McKenzie and our global clients, uh, you know, we continually run into these hurdles around the globe. And most recently, and probably regrettably, not so far from home. And so for us, um, the reason is really twofold. Uh, we, uh, it's about questions of global good governments for our clients, uh, dealing both with legal and brand risk, 
and ultimately um, sustainable business questions. And then secondly, you know, as a global law firm doing business in 44 countries around the world, internally for us, it's about embedding principles within the firm to support a broader purpose, a broader purpose as a law firm. That's why we've been a participant and supporter of the UN and its agencies. Uh, we became the first major law firm to sign on to the UN Global Compact. And for purposes of this call, we are enthusiastically joining this action platform. You know, we recognize it's a time uh, of accelerating change within organizations um, and therefore the need to really innovate rapidly. And to uh, innovate rapidly, uh, all the studies show that collaboration is the key to success. You know, at, at, at our firm here in Toronto, we've established a collaboration, a collaboration lab to address complex issues impacting business. And we believe business can make a difference um, and make themselves indispensable to communities and quite frankly, therefore, guarantee their role. It's not, you know, the guiding principles refer to business and they uh, refer to the concept of doing no harm. Uh, we believe that uh, SDG 16 provides an opportunity for rather business having a positive impact. And this action platform provides a unique and exciting means uh, to embed multi-stakeholder collaboration within the organization and advance and protect fundamental principles to ensure that business is sustainable while also being responsible. And let me conclude by um, uh, saying that we really look forward to actively working with um, you, Ulysses, uh, Nestle, and all the others to make a difference. And we ask that others uh, who are on this call to join us in this uh, endeavor. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, um, Kevin, and I, I think that's just a perfect way to um, bring this amazing hour of discussion to a close. Um, just some final remarks, if you'll indulge me, please. I know that we're just running slightly over. Um, so basically, uh, the two couple of um, things I just want to bring to your attention is that we have, uh, again, mentioned at the top of the hour, the launch of the Action Platform taking place on Monday, the 24th of September. Um, but in order for us to celebrate um, in, in full style um, the launch of the platform, we'll also, um, Baker McKenzie will also be kindly hosting a breakfast launch roundtable at its offices in New York on Tuesday, the 25th of September from 7.30 to 9 a.m. Um, I will send um, everyone that's registered to this webinar a link to, to that event. So um, rest assured you'll receive an invitation for that. Um, so, but in order to bring this webinar to a close, I will, of course, it'd be remiss of me not to, but one final call to action. Um, for, for those on the call and, and that will be listening to the recording, um, from business, governments and civil society, you know, we encourage you to play an active role in the 2020 vision by becoming a patron, participant or partner of the Action Platform and in order to make a, a lasting impact at the global and local level in creating a world that we all want, as we've mentioned throughout the discussion. Um, and so for anyone wishing to learn more, please feel free to reach out to me at the contact information you see it on the screen, Coolius, K-O-U-L-I-A-S, at unglobalcompact.org. Um, we will be sharing the recording and slide deck of the webinar for those of you unable to join us in real time and for those simply wishing to revisit the conversation. We'll also share with you a copy of the 2020 vision paper for your reading pleasure. Um, and on behalf of my co-moderator, Ulysses, thank you. We'd also like to extend a special thank you to everyone, including our wonderful speakers, for taking the time to join us today. Um, we hope to continue the conversation, but we wish you farewell for now. Thank you. Thank you.